Here on the bench here that today is my trusty 465B oscilloscope that I've had for oh over 20 years. And the only thing that's really been wrong with the scope, almost since I've owned it, is the trigger slope switch for uh, the A trigger. Notice on the B trigger that the switch snaps easily into the positive or negative positions. The, the A one doesn't really make contact over on the minus side, it only does on the plus side, so the switch itself is faulty. And thanks to a good friend of mine, I've actually got a brand new uh, replacement switch and pot for the A trigger control. So hopefully this will just be a short repair video. Now the first step will be just to uh, remove these two knobs. Next we'll simply throw the front cover on so it can sit it on its face and remove the screws to slide the case off. Okay, with the six screws removed, I can uh, pull off the uh, plastic bezel and then we can slide off the case. Now this control uh, almost couldn't be easier, so let's keep our fingers crossed. It's simply bolted to the front panel and it's wired uh, in with just a little wiring harness, so it should be a very simple repair. And before any desoldering or disassembly, I uh, just made a quick little diagram of the wires going to the switch and the three wires going to the pot. So we can pull all the wires off of the harness here and uh, reattach them in the proper order. And to make this repair even simpler, the wire harness going to the control is on a little terminal strip. And we can simply unplug it and remove everything as an assembly and attach the wires on the new part right on the bench. And a nice 5 16 deep socket will do nicely to loosen up the nut on this control. All right, there we have it. It should be uh, really simple to just uh, swap the wires out uh, to the new part. All right, there we go, all soldered up, ready to reinstall. Slip it back into the hole in the front panel, lining up the tab, and then reinstall the washer and the retaining nut. And give the uh, retaining a little bit of a snug with the 5 8 socket, and then reinstall the wire harness back onto the circuit board. And before I do, I'll install the knobs back on here first, and then uh, we'll double check that I'm sure everything works before we uh, button everything up. Make sure we get that knob centered properly. That looks pretty good. All right, and now the switch. Yeah, I just got it snug, so I want to get this thing centered for the two positions. I like it right there and I'll snug the knob back up again. I'm going to put on the front face so I can stand it up to slide the metal half case back on again. And very carefully. There's a couple of little leaf springs. You want to be sure that uh, don't get hung up here but they all should be heading the right way so the case will slide on nicely and then you just kind of fish the two halves of the case down into the metal gasketing, or the RF gasketing at the front panel. Now slip the plastic bezel back on, making sure we get the top in the top and the bottom on the bottom, and keeping the RF gasket material in place at the same time. And just to push that in place, and we can put on the six screws and the feet, and we're all done. All right, let's fire it up, make sure everything works. Turn it on. Oh, I just attach the probe to the uh, uh, probe compensation signal here. Look up ground. And let's see if I speed things way up here. Uh, we should be able to just see. Let me turn the intensity up here. Just see where I'm triggering. My level is adjusting that level up or down, so I know the level's working right. Let's slow it back down again here. Turn my intensity back down. And that's triggering on the falling edge and the rising edge. 
All right, looks like that very simple repair was effective and done. Boy, I, I wish uh, all repairs were that easy. <laughs> anyway, if you like what you see, you know, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. Uh, and tell your friends. And we'll look for you again next time. Thanks.